All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, we're going to do a little video today talking about filling up your toolbox, all right, getting all the things in that you need so that you can have answers as the season goes on. Make sure you check out some of our sponsors, GameStrat, sideline replay system we use. All right, DC1 is an in-game app uh, that lets you make critical, lets you make, uh, helps you make critical in-game adjustments using actual live in-game data. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine, we have one that we use in our weight room. All right, high and tight, which is a uh, ball training security aid that has an auditory feedback so you know exactly when you are holding the ball correctly with the wrist in the right position, elbow, points of pressure, all those, thing, um, all those good things with ball security. Just Play Football is the uh, digital software tool that I use, the play diagramming tool that I use when I'm going to uh, speak at clinics or do um, any, any videos for Zoom or anything that I might be showing, um, slides of anything. Just Play is the... Um, digital software that I use. Baker Sporting Goods provides me uh, with our uniforms here at the school that I'm at and our uh, coaching gear and our fan gear. Um, so make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. And then Dome Hats is the official uh, headwear sponsor of the current school that I'm at and Play Fast Football. Great company, local company here in Northeast Florida doing some great work all over the country with their hats. They uh, have an online custom hat builder where you can create your own hat using your own logo and, and change the color of the panels and the buttons and the eyelets and everything else so it lets you take control of your own hat and customize your own hat every hat has a story make sure uh, you let dome help you tell yours so what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is uh, how to go through a season or an off season or whatever it may be trying to fill up your toolbox so that you have all the potential answers you may want to have if and when these situations arise that you need to use those answers. Now, with that being said, all right, I am going to talk about filling up that toolbox, but only using what you need out of that toolbox. Okay, so for instance, for us in, in, um, in a two by two world, all right, in, in our four to five days in a two by two world, we always started playing that with what we call palms or two read coverage. Okay, and that's our coverage. We've talked about it a million times on this, on this channel. That's our coverage where corner and safety read off number two. We have rules to define what two's doing. If two is out, how we're going to play that. All right, so if two is out, the corner is going to play two. The safety's got to go to one. If two is what we define as vertical, now it's going to become man to man. So safety's going to have two, corner's going to have one. If two goes under, we've got to match that release with our underneath players. We've got to alert push to the side that the three is, and, and we have to understand where our three dropper is working. We've got, if two's under, we've got to be able to make under calls and then um, match those releases with our underneath coverage. And now the safety can, can either double the front side one or possibly look for digs or things coming from the back side, depending on the game plan that we're using. Right? So palms are two read, gives us a chance to be split field too high. All right. Gives us seven on the run, which I really like. That's why I like to stay too high to 10 personnel two by two as much as possible because it gives you the illusion of a five-man box, but it's really a seven-man box. And it gives us the opportunity to get plus one into runs and quarterback runs and things that we want to defend. So we feel like Palms or, or two read as our base coverage gives us the things that we want to do to defend every single down. All right, when we see teams that are basically two open receivers. All right, so Palms 2 read is always our go-to for two open receivers. All right, and if it's two by two with two open receivers on each side, then we can play it on both sides because we have the ability to do so. All right, but when you start to talk about filling that toolbox, we also want to have the ability to play a safety outside of two, okay, with the free safety inside of two. And then we're probably going to have to play man on number one with the corner. Now, why do we want the ability to do that? Sometimes with the splits of number two, okay. Sometimes the split of number two gets so far from number one that palms is not an option. Sometimes the split of number two gets so far inside, okay, that our run support might be in jeopardy supporting the perimeter, all right, if, if they are a perimeter run team or a jet sweep team with condensed or tighter splits by number two. All right, this box adjustment for us might be a better adjustment. If they're hurting us in the passing game to number one, 
in the quick game because in, in palms, flats are a little bit exposed. This adjustment might help us. We might be able to get the down safety under one a little bit quicker. Depending on the splits and, and the types of rubs that we're getting, if we want to completely take quick game away, we could play this guy up in press man as long as we're not going to get rubbed with the down safety who's actually a, a wheel of two player, right? So now we change how we play the wheel of two. The wheel of two is now the down safety and not the corner, all right? So we want to be able to play that style of defense in addition to palms as a changeup, okay? But only in certain scenarios. But we need to be able to play what I would call quarters concepts there, true quarters concepts. Some people may call it robber, and that's fine. But outside leverage by the down safety, true quarters concepts, we need to be able to play that style of defense. We also need to be able to play, all right, straight man with the corner and the safety and leave the down safety underneath playing his underneath coverage rules. All right, and one of the reasons we like doing this is if we get, sometimes if we get stacks, all right, we need to play it in man and banjo it and not be able, you know, not always play our palms rules or our quarters rules. All right, if we get really wide splits, out here, they're trying to walk that apex player out to run the ball, so sometimes we'll have to make all right, our man checks where we just lock it down man and we let our apex players stay in the box. All right, so we have to have the ability to play all right, those different things to two removed. We have to have the ability to do all those and have the, you know, the, the capability, I should say, of, of doing those things. And then we also want to have the capability of being able to play true 2D. Okay, so we, we want to have the capability of being able to play true old-fashioned 2 deep coverage. All right, now, remember with split field coverage, we can choose to play any of these things to one side and completely change how we play the other side. So, in a 2 by 2 world, we can take any of these coverages and play them on one side while playing a completely different coverage on the other side. That's what we really fall in love with with this split field coverage concepts is once we fill the toolbox with the answers, all right, we now, based on the opponent, based on the game plan, based on where the ball is on the field, based on maybe where the back is or what they're trying to do, we now have selective answers to each side that we don't have to make one, like if we want to play man on a side, we don't have to play man across the board, we can play man on one side and a zone coverage on the other. If we want to play cover two, for instance, into the boundary, but we don't want to play it to the field, well now we can play palms to the field and cover two into the boundary. So split field coverage gives us the answers that we want in the toolbox that we can reach in and grab based on the opponent, the game plan, and what we might need. All right. Now, with that being said, 95% of the time for us versus two remove receivers, we are going to play that coverage. All right? We may have played this coverage, all right, maybe 5% of snaps. All right? We may have played man concepts 5% of snaps, and we may have played too deep, for argument's sake, 5% of snaps. Now, I'm not, those aren't the exact percentages, but what I'm trying to do is just, just, just make a point to say these three adjustments we may not have played a lot of, but we may have used them in games at times. All right? So even though we fill our toolbox with answers, that doesn't mean we have to use all those answers each week. All right? So there's times where I only play palms all right, to two removed, and I don't come with another answer. When would that be? Like the beginning of this year when we were really struggling with new players and young players and we couldn't play anything else, so all we could play is palms. Then we got to a point where we were struggling playing palms, so we got out of palms and we played a lot of man coverage principles. We went single high and we're playing a lot of um, single high, man free, and, and man principles because we were struggling with new kids playing the coverages we wanted to play. So what we did was we kept repping some things in practice, but then when we went to the game, we only carried one or two coverages to play that night. And as a coach, what I was doing was I was putting my kids in what I thought was the best position for us to win on Friday night, but I was still coaching throughout the week to try and build and add so that if we ever did flip the script a little bit, 
like we were fortunate enough this year to do with some of our players, and the light bulb went off of how to play certain things. We kept repping coverages in practice and things that we wanted to do, and we kept filling the toolbox. But there were games this year where I only played one coverage the whole night or two coverages the whole night because that's all we could do. So I had the toolbox filled. I just didn't reach in to pull out all the answers. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to fill that toolbox up so that when you need the answers, you have them if your players can play them. Answers are only answers if your players can play them. Answers with these and this are good for a coach up here in your mind, but if your kids can't play them, they're not really answers. Answers are only answers if your kids can play them. Okay, so another thing to look at, all right, and we've been working on this all year long, transitioning back to four-man front stuff and building in defensive line stunts to help our line and linebackers in the, in, in, in the run game, stopping the run, by trying to move and create havoc for the offensive line, but trying to take some things away that physically we were struggling with. Okay, so having answers on, on the three and the five side, the strong side for us. Okay, so we carry the penetrate long stick stunt. Okay, so we carry the penetrate long stick stunt. Takes away the A and the B gap. Hopefully forces the run game that side to go a little bit wider so our mic can run. We need great penetration by the three to keep the quarterback in the pocket, or we need a redirect by the three, all right, outside if we get pass sets. All right, but we carry that stunt. We carry, all right, the under stunt by those two players. So we take away the A and the B gap that way. All right, so we carry the under stunt, pirate stunt. We carry, all right, the twist. We carry the end penetrating first and the tackle looping. So we carry, you know, those three-man, or sorry, two-man games, all right, to the strong side with our three and five technique. We carry the three technique to the A-gap by himself. Okay, so we carry that stunt. We carry the three and the two-eye opposite. All right, so we carry that stunt as well. So we'll carry the three technique by himself, the three and the two-eye opposite. All right, sometimes we'll carry the inside nut stunt. We don't have it in this year right now um, because we got to our four-man front stuff a little bit later, so we don't have that in right now, but we'll carry sometimes the nut stunt, okay, and then we'll carry the rush end under into the V-gap, so we'll carry that stunt on that side. We'll have the ability to loop the nose on that side as well, okay, so... We carry a bunch of two-man and one-man games, all right, and then certain games that could become possible three-man games. So when we run Pirate, if we got a pass set, that would create a natural loop by the nose, so that becomes a three-man game. Okay, so my point being is I try to fill my toolbox up with all my D-line games and my D-line movements that we can use, all right? So to the strong side, to the weak side, one-man movements, two-man movements, three-man movements, I try to fill my toolbox up with all those things that I may need. But again, during the course of a game, so uh, this past week, we only carried into the game, all right, the twist stunt on that side, the blood stunt in the middle, which is these two, and the rub stunt, which is the rush end into the beat gap. That's all we carry. All right, those are the only things I felt good with our kids doing. Those are the only things that I felt good based on the opponent we were playing. So that's all we carried, even though in the toolbox, all right, I had the pirate stunt as well, all right, uh, sorry, we didn't get to the nut stunt, but we had nail with the three technique going across, all right, uh, some people might call that tag, all right, and then we had, um, and then we had for us, ends first, inside guys second, all right, so we had uh, this. All right, so we had that, but we only ran those three last week. So we had the ability to run all our stunts, but we only carried three of them into the game. So in other words, I had the toolbox filled with answers that I may need, and I'm not afraid to go to them if I need them, but I didn't carry them into the game last week. I only used those three stunts. All right, now I had them there ready to use, just like the coverages we talked about. They're there. They're being taught. They're being developed. They're being 
ready to, you know, they're being developed so that they're ready to use if you need them. But if you don't, you don't have to call them. Okay, so on the defensive side of the ball this year for us, what we've tried to do, okay, is we've tried to fill that toolbox with things that we think the kids are going to need and that we're going to need to be a good defensive football team. But we've been very selective week by week the entire year of what we've actually used and what we've done in games because we had a lot of new players, a lot of young players, and they weren't ready to do everything. So what we did was we made some slight changes into our, into our defense. Uh, we've gone from odd front stuff back to even front stuff. We still play our split field coverages with three safeties. But what we've done is we've continued to work in practice and steal some practice time week by week developing things and working on things that we didn't necessarily use in the game, but we were getting ready to use down the road. So that gave me the ability last week, all right, like I said, a couple weeks ago, we were at a point where I only played man or man free defense. And we went into a game that way and we were fortunate enough to win that game. And then the following week we went and we went back to playing some of our palms and, and our split field stuff. Uh, very few adjustments, just playing palms, and our three by one, um, our mix or mini adjustment, whatever you want to, however you want to look at it. And then the following week, um, we then added some more two by two checks where we were able to play it man to man. We were able to play quarters or box to it. So we got ourselves to a, to a situation where we just continued to progress to where our kids were more comfortable. But this was three weeks of working through all those things. And the first week, not calling any of them, playing nothing but man and man free. The next week, only calling the base structures. And the following week, now being able to play some of the adjustments or the answers that are in the toolbox. Okay, so you work to fill the toolbox, but you only reach in and pull things out when you need them. And you only reach in and pull them out when you think your kids can play them. So it's okay to keep working throughout the course of the year on adding things to the toolbox, but every time you add something, you don't need to reach in and pull it out that week or that game if you can't play it or if you don't need it. You just keep it in that toolbox and you try and refine it every week so that if you had to go back to it, you go back to the kids and say, hey, I think this is a good opportunity for us to play cover two into the boundary if we get two remove receivers instead of pumps. All right, I think they're trying to throw quick game to the number one. Let's get up in his face and press him. We can support the run with the corner into the boundary. The will doesn't have to remove too far from, from the box to be the hook curl player underneath number two. Safety can play off the half. I don't think they can give us a huge vertical stretch into the boundary. For what this team is doing, this is a great time for us to go back to cover two into the boundary. And then you pull the answer out from there. Okay, so you fill the toolbox year-round. You fill the toolbox with what you need. Defensive line stunts, coverages, blitzes. All right, you refine them each week. You figure out what is good for the game plan each week, and then you only reach in if and when you have to use those things. All right, so hopefully this video helps you guys uh, understand how to build and, and fill your toolbox up with the things that you want to do. Hopefully it allows you to see within split field coverage principles why we love it so much because it gives us so many answers on each side independent of each other of how we can defend certain formations. All right, so hopefully you can, you can see going back to four-man fronts and, and defensive line stunts on each side, two-man games, one-man games, and impossible three-man games. Things that can help us um, and things that can help us protect or take away some things that are giving us issues in the run game, all right, and then maybe create some matchups in the pass game. So hopefully this video helps you with all that stuff. I appreciate everything you guys do for PlayFest. Uh, appreciate you guys checking out the videos. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Make sure you turn our notifications on so you know when we get videos out. Thumbs up, thumbs down the video so we know whether you like the content or you don't like the content. And as always, leave a comment. I respond to uh, just about every comment that I can see on my channel. All right, so appreciate you guys. Good luck if you're playing this week. If you're getting ready to play in the winter or uh, in, after the, the, the new year, good luck to you guys. Anybody that's starting in the playoffs, good luck to you. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll see you next time.